I would like to welcome you to the discussion of what determines the price of a good. The simple answer is demand and the supply in the market. But how does it actually work? So let us look at a market for a consumer good and that is characterized by competition. So competition means rivalry between those who want to buy the goods and those who want to sell goods. So let us proceed in three steps. We want to look at the demand side first, then the supply side, and then we put things together and look at the market. On the demand side, we have a lot of factors that determine the quantity of demand, and we want to look at the major ones. So here are the major ones. The price of the good, of course, determines how much consumers want to buy. But we look at this in a moment in more detail. Let's look at other factors that could play a role. So these are prices of other goods, because consumers may switch from one good to other goods. It's income, because we know with people with high income may buy more goods. The expected future price may determine whether you buy today or tomorrow. Preference, how much we like goods, determines whether we buy them or not. And finally, of course, in a country where there are more people, the demand for a specific good is higher than in a country where there are fewer people. So now let us focus on the very first factor, namely the price of the good. So we can write down the demand function like this. Q stands for the quantity that consumers want to buy. P is the price of the good. We can show this in a price quantity diagram where we show the price on the vertical axis and the quantity on the horizontal axis. Typically, we look at such a demand curve running from the upper left to the lower right. But why are people buying more when the price is lower? Actually, there are two reasons. One is that with lower prices, an individual may buy, want to buy more goods. Hmm. But then also, with lower prices, there may be more people entering the market. Those who didn't want to buy at higher prices. So two reasons why the quantity of uh, demand increases with lower prices. So now let's look at the supply side. Here we can also think of a number of factors that determine the supply. So in other words, what producers want to sell. One is of course the price of the good they sell. But prices of similar goods they could produce alternatively may also play a role. Prices of factors of production because these factor of production prices influence their costs may play a role. And then of course the expected future price may determine whether they sell today or they sell tomorrow. And the state of technology determines at what le price levels they may be able to already produce or not. And of course the number of suppliers. With more suppliers in the market we have a higher level of supply of this product. Now let's again focus on the very first factor that determines the supply. Namely the price of this very good. Again, we can write down a function that looks very similar to the demand function. Only here S represents the supply and Q again the quantity and P the price level. Now in a price quantity diagram, this curve now is upward sloping. That means it runs from the lower left to the upper right. Now why does it run like this? Again, two reasons can be distinguished. One is that with higher prices, producers can afford to add more expensive processes. Maybe they have to pay people over for overtime or for weekend work and that's more costly. But the second factor is that with higher prices, more producers enter the market because their costs can then be covered. Now let's put these two sides together, the demand side and the supply side. And that gives us the entire market. Here you see the two curves that we discussed separately before. Now, what happens in such a market? So let's start with a price suddenly arising at a level that is shown here as PA. At this price, consumers want to buy quantities of Q1, but producers would like to sell Q2. So there is a discrepancy. We call this discrepancy an excess supply. What happens in such a case? Well, producers could produce and then put the products they cannot sell on store. But over time, probably they will offer lower prices so that they can sell their products. So we will assume that with an excess supply, there is a tendency for prices to decline. Then two things happen. 
One is that some consumers will increase their demand. Then also some producers will not anymore want to sell the goods in the market. So in other words, with the price decline, the excess supply will indeed decline. This comes to an end when the gap between supply and demand comes to an end, meaning that gap is zero. This is what we call the equilibrium in a market, with P asterisk and Q asterisk here denoting the price and the quantity respectively. Now let's start with a price that is below such an intersection price. And then the price would mean that there are consumers who want to buy Q2, but producers only want to produce Q1. In this case, we have excess demand. Now, it is very reasonable to assume that in such a case, consumers offer a little bit higher prices and producers may ask a little bit higher prices. And this means that in such a situation, the price of this product will tend to increase. Then again, we have two effects, namely the supply will increase and the demand will decline until we reach a point E, that stands for equilibrium, with P asterisk and Q asterisk again showing the price and the quantity level in such a situation. So putting all this together leads us to the following result. The forces of demand and supply, and not a president or a pr prime minister, determines the price of the product, but demand and supply in this market. And this leads to an equilibrium in a competitive market. And the equilibrium is characterized by the quantity that producers want to supply and the consumers want to buy is exactly the same. Other prices would lead to a wedge between price uh, quantities of demand and quantities of supply. And this is what we call a disequilibrium. There's only one caveat to our result. And that is that many markets may not completely meet the strict conditions of what we call perfect competition. But there's good news, and this is even if the conditions for perfect competition are not completely met, the outcome may often not be very different. So we can conclude the concept of demand and supply is very powerful in explaining what determines the price and for that matter the quantity of a good.